Hi everyone, this is Amanda. Today is June the 19th and I hope that you're all well. Today's video is linked into the subject of divine love, divine counterparts, twin flame energy. Um, I've held off doing a twin flame update video for months, which those of you that have been waiting have probably observed. I did sort of go in and do a pick a card reading on love, I think around Valentine's Day. Um, I've done two pick a card readings actually, and one of the ones recently, one of the piles did feel quite twin flame energy. But I've never actually come on and wanted to, to be, I'm being honest, I've not wanted to come on and do a twin flame video for months. Um, because there's been a lot of processing and integration of what I believe this all to be. Um, I now feel ready to be able to speak on it in terms of what I understand, what I've learnt over the last six months. Um, but when I say this, this is also to do with having observed it in the collective, having listened to some of you and some of your stories, some of you I've known for a long time, um, either that you're already in a committed twin flame relationship or you have been um, hoping for a union or reunion of sorts with your beloved. Um, one of the reasons I've held off is that the last one that I did, um, I can't even remember when it would have been, certainly it feels like it was about six months ago, I it was left on a bit of a cliffhanger because there is a playlist on this channel called Twin Flame where I suppose I've tried to take us through in a chronological sort of logical order um, and read the strand of energy which is Twin Flame. So you know how is the Divine Masculine doing, how is the Divine Feminine doing um, and try to understand the dynamics, what might be preventing them from becoming closer to each other, what might be preventing um, union itself, what is the inner work that they need to be doing on themselves individually and maybe together when they get together. Uh, at Tower Bridge, for whatever reason, I can't even remember really why I first started talking about Tower Bridge, but it came in as a piece of symbolism um, over a year ago, maybe two years ago, uh, linked into this whole subject for me. And I've talked about it. Uh, one of you, because I started to talk about it, s drew this beautiful picture for me, but I feel it's for us as well. Um, representing, as we can see, the, the masculine and the feminine, the angelic frequencies, and spiritual frequencies that, that are around these two individually, but also the whole um, dynamic of them together as well. And we see here Tower Bridge opening, the butterflies wanting to fly through it, signifying that the journey is complete. Um, from caterpillar to butterfly, transformation has occurred. And I was channeling over last year that I felt there was a whole fl flotilla of ships, i.e. meaning uh, masculine and feminine, but these are interchangeable. It can be linked into any uh, sexual orientation that you have. It's just to do with the masculine and feminine energies that we have within ourselves. So I'm just going to use those terms throughout this video, otherwise it gets a bit confusing. But realise that when I'm talking twin flame, it doesn't have to be male, female. It can be female, female. It can be male, male. So, you know, there are there are other, obviously there are all connotations of this. I hope it goes without saying. So, but anyway, here we've got the feminine, the masculine, and we were awaiting the arrival of these, uh, these two uh, who had made it past the finishing line, uh, freedom, transformation, what was the journey going to be? Some did make it through, um, that bridge being opened. The bridge being opened was also symbolic of maybe particular portals um, that we've been going through, but the bridge always stays open now. It's always energetically open and waiting for two divine counterparts to basically be able to see each other, recognize each other, having done the inner work individually and coming back to form what I call a third energy. So for me, Twin Flame is very much about two 
not becoming one, but becoming three. So that is uh, you and they as individual, complete sovereign beings, not split souls, two souls that are individual in their own right, that come together and create this third energy. So it's a bit like a sort of pyramid type energy. Um, but then what happened towards the end of 2020, maybe it was the middle of 2020, I did a video where I was getting information and also experiencing energy, which was linked into the Jilted Bride, is, is what I called it. It felt it was more the Divine Feminine that had been jilted, but, you know, it probably could go either way. Um, not necessarily physically being jilted at the altar, although, unfortunately, maybe that did apply to some. But it's this thing about having got so close, so close to the finishing line, but for whatever reason, um, one party or both, remember, you know, they're mirrors of each other, stalling at the last hurdle. Um, now, spirit were left with a bit of a, um, well, there's never such a thing as a problem for spirit. There's only solutions. Um, but a timeline that many of us had been on which was linked into maybe just one particular person that we were, uh, I was going to say focused on, but Metatron saying fixated on in terms of them being the one, the twin flame. When this fell away, and I'll talk about uh, how it falls away, and actually it's very surprising what you actually feel when it does, because there's very little trauma. It's really quite interesting. Um, it creates this vacuum for something else. Um, and that's really what this video is about. So what happens next is, is really what we're going to be talking about. I'm just bringing you up to speed. Um, before I get into the nitty gritty, I think I would like to say that I'd like to just say what this video is not. This video is not an attack on... Um, anything that you hold to be true that you may not be ready to let go of or might not be in your path to let go of. It is not presenting the finished 100% complete oracle <laughs> because this is a journey. One of you in the comments yesterday who noticed I was going to be doing this video and didn't know much about the whole twin flame energy said something along the lines of can you just tell us what it is almost like from A to Z. And it was like, no, because this has been decades worth of work and energy and healing. There's no way even in a 30 minute video or even in a three hour video, you'd be able to get to that. And indeed the journey is completely unique for every single individual. Um, there is no particular script, although there are certain things that we all experience on the twin flame path. Metatron gave me this analogy last night because twin flame as an energy is one um, vehicle that souls can choose to accelerate their ascension journey and indeed might be an integral, sometimes the most important part of their ascension journey. It does not mean that if you have never identified with it or have never understood it, that somehow you are missing out. What it means in that case is that you will probably have another vehicle, um, which will be a body of work, for want of a better word, um, to um, go through in this life that will be about ascension for you. But Metatron said this last night to me. Um, he said the twin flame path is just one way to ascension. There are other paths. And he described it like schools. So whichever country you're in, probably you have a school system whereby there are different types of school. Um, so in the UK, for example, we have uh, faith schools. We have Steiner schools. We have, um, I don't know, comprehensives. We have grammar schools. We have different types of school. Um, we have specialist schools as well. Uh, we have scholarships whereby, you know, you don't, you know, you might focus on something like, um, I don't know, music or sport. But, this, but the point is, whichever school you're at, and the school represents the, um, 
ascension vehicle that you've chosen, there will be core bits of the curriculum that are the same in whichever school stroke vehicle that you chose before you incarnated. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of people sometimes which are very dismissive of Twin Flame Path, which is like, yeah, I never got it. I always thought it was a bit of a fairy tale. It's just because it's not your path. Um, and I think we have to be very respectful of the vehicles that individuals choose to learn what they need to learn in this lifetime. Twin Flame is just one way that you can do this. But some of the core principles that would belong to everybody, whether you resonate with the Twin Flame Path or not, would be basics such as learning about forgiveness, compassion, um, I don't know, gratitude, etc. Okay, basic spiritual principles. I was thinking myself the other night, because I knew I was going to do this video, I thought, okay, twin flame path, what really has it taught me over decades? What really, if you all boil it down to one, one or two things, What's it really all been about? And I think what it's been about is actually, do you believe in love? Do, I'm hearing that song by Cher now, do you believe in love? Can't remember which one it is. She did a song on that. I'm just hearing that in my mind's eye. Because it is, it's about keeping the flame of love alive. Now, the new one of the new pieces of information here is linked into, which Metatron was saying to me, and it makes complete sense, is that the whole twin flame concept, for want of a better word, um, ideology, theory, energy, whatever, it's, it's as though we've all become very fixated on it just being about one person, that you are my twin flame or you are my twin flame. That's what it looks like, okay? That's what it looks like and I can name it and it's all been about that one person. If we go back to what happened towards the tail end of 2020, when that key person may very well have been completely taken out of the picture, okay, also via um, death, not just through um, free will in terms of this other party choosing at the 11th hour to not want to commit, not want to step forward, not want to do the final bit. Um, so there's an absence, there's an absence of that person and it's permanent, it's permanent. Well, you know, you can never say never in, in this game because to be honest, we're entering a season now, and I'll, I'll come to this, this is quite a difficult video to do because there's so many concepts in it that are quite difficult to explain. I'm just trying to do my best, so bear with me because although I'm saying this person probably is completely out of the picture for us, for those that are resonating with what I'm saying, there's also this energy of magic within this time as well, which is almost like anything could happen. Um, but the point is, if that if they were to come back, okay, if they were to suddenly do the work, by that time there will be there will have been a dawning realization within you in terms of, well, actually, I thought I wanted that, but I'm not sure I do anymore, because it's like a sliding doors moment. That was the moment it was meant to, there is such a thing with relationships whereby you can meet somebody at the wrong time and you would have been completely and utterly perfect for that person, but actually you met them when you were too young, you were too immature, or maybe, I don't know, other circumstances have happened. Um, and things have come in and just made it more impossible. So the other thing that can happen, as well as I'm not sure I actually want it anymore, because this was a big letdown for those that were jilted, a big letdown. There was a big grieving process, very raw process that happened. The other very real and possible scenario is that somebody else is on the horizon, somebody else is already around. They're not a replacement. They're not, um, they're not a replacement. I can't stress that enough because this is where we're getting into the subject matter of this video, which is to do with what Metatron said, which is that twin flame is not a person, it is an energy. Um, it's as though 
the one who wasn't able to make it to the final leg of the journey with you, um, they demonstrated and showed the potential that was there. You were correct in what you felt in terms of the, the connection. You were 100% correct. And what you were resonating with, being pulled towards, you think is a physical body that looks, you know, like whatever it looks like, with hair, with eyes, whatever. But it was the energy within that person that actually was the pull. Them having effectively put down the baton, the baton gets passed to somebody else who holds the same energy, which is the twin flame energy. They look probably completely different, or maybe not, I don't know. Um, but it's the energy that's contained within that person. This also ties in to what I was trying to express last time I did a video on this subject, where I talked about, um, I gave the analogy of conception, the egg and the ovum, the point of conception, which is the fastest sperm effectively to enter and penetrate the egg for life to start to be formed, okay? We've been fixated effectively on putting it bluntly, it's like the fastest, the analogy is the fastest sperm, the one that got there first towards the energy of the divine feminine. That's who she's been fixated on. But I explained there are all these other energies that were so close to um, getting there as well. It's not, you wouldn't even be able to break it down into almost a time period. It's that close. It's milliseconds. Um, and it's representative, the energy of the egg and the, uh, the sperm and the egg and the conception moment is linked into creation point, ultimate creation point, when you and I, as sparks of God, were basically blasted out from wherever we were blasted out from. Whether you believe it's the Big Bang energy, whether you believe in the story of creation, um, you know, it, 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 you know the, the point is the same. The moment that you were created, you were also created in those milliseconds with a number of other souls who um, were shot out at the same time. And that tribe is your tribe. And the, the twin flame baton can be passed to anybody in that tribe. OK, so it's not completely random. It's not just, OK, well, this person fell at the last hurdle. So I'm just going to pass this baton to Joe Bloggs. They look as though they'll do. I'm talking about spirit. Spirit doesn't do that. Spirit sort of literally scans. And I'm, it's interesting. I'm being shown us, shown us in terms of spirit's eyes as musical notes. So your musical notes as, I don't know, Matthew, um, resonates with a musical note of somebody else called David or rep or resonates with a musical note of Joan, you know? Um, so the baton gets passed to the person that holds the note, the vibration that is pretty much near identical to you, not completely, but has the same resonance because you were shot out at the same time. OK, so um, that's the first thing to say. Let's just put this here. I'm going to be calling on my guides through this session to try to help us understand this. Um, I'd like us now to go back a few steps and talk about letting go of... Um, I'm going to talk about false twin. OK, um, because there's a lot of information out there about false twins. Sometimes people feel as though they were hoodwinked or, well, I thought it was you, but actually it's not you because you have never been able to do the inner work. 
you've never been able to meet me, you've never been able to, you know, meet me at my level, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, you've never been able to come forward for us to basically be united. So you're a false twin, and then somebody else comes in and it's like, oh, they're the real one. What I want to say here is there's no such, I don't personally believe there's any such thing as a false twin, because everybody on your path, if you're on the twin flame path, remember twin flame is a pathway linked into ascension. It's about what you're meant to learn, what you're meant to experience, what you're meant to heal uh, individually within yourself, but equally your twin will also have work to be done. That's how you, um, you're, you're like each other's coaches is what Metatron is saying. Even if you're not in the same physicality or you're not even together, because a lot of twin flames are still in separation, um, it's to do with the work. It's always been to do with the work. Um, so this thing about, yeah, they were just a false twin. They weren't a false twin. There's no such thing as a mistake on the twin flame path because it's all about trying to get to a higher octave of love, okay? So, you know, to use the analogy of an opera singer, to be able to hit that high note, you can't hit the high note without um, going through a um, progression of steps to get your um, ability to the point that you can create that high note. The high note is the ultimate expression of love between two human beings on the earth plane. That is also different from the expression of divine love in other places. Okay, but we're just talking about on the earth plane um, because we often talk about unconditional love, don't we? Linked into the twin flame path. That's actually a really hard, high standard to have set for ourselves as a community because the truth is unconditional love is, you might think you believe in it, but say, for example, you're with somebody and it's like, yes, I unconditionally love you, you know, and then they do something whereby, I don't know, they cheat on you with their best friend or they um, they take all your money, they leave you destitute. You, really? You know, so it's like we just have to be realistic in terms of the levels of love that we can personally reach in this lifetime. Every single generation, Metatron is saying, um, is able to reach a higher octave. What he means by that is the potential is there to reach a higher octave. So whatever you are able to reach in this lifetime, your children will be able to reach a higher one, potentially. I mean, this assumes obviously you're, the inner work is being done and you're even on this path in the first place. But this whole thing, it's like I want to bust a myth here, which is that, yes, twin flame path, the ultimate goal is, ult is, is unconditional love. But equally, we live in an earth that at the moment in particular is uh, corrupted to a degree. Um, and there are a lot of problems at the moment. There are a lot of issues. So don't set the bar so high that you're, you block the ability to be able to just love. Because it's just basically about loving. Loving to the highest degree that you are capable of. And you and another coming together to create, as I say, that third energy, that higher octave. Um, so I, I don't personally feel there's any such thing as a false twin. I think they're all steps along the way. And remember what I've just said, which is basically it's about the energy. It's about the energy. Now, energy can come and go, Metatron saying. So this is interesting. If you think about twin flame as an energy, not a person, somebody can hold that twin flame energy for decades and then it can it can leave some people can hold the twin flame energy for a lifetime some people can hold it for a couple of months some people can hold it for a couple of weeks so again sometimes we can meet people or connect with people and there is this energy which is just it's beyond i know you it's to do with you hold the twin flame energy which is the energy that I am here to understand and um, work with as an ascension tool in this lifetime. And there is the potential here for us to come together to do something extraordinary. Equally, there is the ability for us to be extraordinary just in our own rights. OK, it's not all just about union. Um, a lot of people, and I'm noticing in the comments, I expect these comments, um, 
when you start to open up about what is twin flame, a lot of people will say, well, it, it was always just about the inner journey. And that, I think I want to just say that's a given. That is a given. Um, just because we talk about union and wanting to um, be with another, you know, in terms of this higher love, doesn't mean that we're trying to bypass the inner work. Because the last thing that a twin flame love is, is codependency. It's not about, you know, I need you and you need me. And somehow we've got to cling together, you know, like uh, whilst the world goes on around us, you know, I can't cope without you. I need you. It's got nothing to do with that. It's to do with two sovereign beings who have done their work and who are doing their work, but equally are not perfect. OK, um, again, I almost feel as though as a collective, this is quite interesting. What I'm being told is as a collective, I am being told we've set the bar too high, guys. Um, it's like who who design who designed the race? So the analogy of the racetrack running the laps, you know, at the last hurdle, somebody has bailed out on a lot of us. OK. Um, and it's like, well, what was that all about? It's like who designed the race to be that hard? We designed the race to be that hard and we have to take responsibility for that. God didn't design it that way. We did, you know. Um, so we can reset the rules of the game is what I'm hearing. That doesn't mean that suddenly it becomes a watered down version of uh, ultimate divine love. Not at all. It just means that you're given... Um, tools and staging posts and periods of reflection to be able to complete what you came to complete but equally realizing that if you never complete it you still haven't failed um okay so what do i mean by that let's go back a few steps let's go back to the energy of one party having not being able to do what you thought they were going to do or, you know, there's, there's, there's that energy that's come in that's prevented the final um, victory lap. Um, okay, let's just see where I want to start with this. Okay, where do I want to start with this? OK. Right. Spirit basically stepped in is what I'm hearing. Spirit stepped in. Spirit, watch everything. Observe everything. Know you. Know your divine counterpart. Know also other possible divine counterparts that are out there for you. Know what you're capable of. Know what they're capable of. For those that have been that had that had been, or maybe this is happening right now for you, in connections which had been going on for years, but never amounting to anything, and equally bringing this is the important bit, bringing a lot of pain, bringing a lot of suffering, because of the longing for. Spirit stepped in and realise that one or both wasn't able to do that final chapter of the book, the final lesson. No judgment at all. It's just because of circumstances. It's not always about they can't do it. I mean, it's interesting that all of this came in and happened around the time of the pandemic, which we're still living through. Because the other thing that's very common in Twin Flame Energy energies is that you're often physically apart from each other and I'm talking the other side of the world apart from each other this happens time and time again and it's a part of the path usually in the initial stages where um, you are separated for a reason okay you're separated for a reason and it's to do with the, the gap between you in that gap between you, there is opportunity and potential 
for extraordinary healing. And oh my God, I can feel it here. Can you feel, if you just put your hands like that, and if what I'm saying is resonating, if, you, if you're here and they're there, okay, um, can you feel what I'm feeling in terms of, I mean, A, I can feel the magnetic pull between these two, but equally I can feel this energy here is just a, I'm being shown it's like a ball of alchemy. It's like a ball of magic. It's as though two mirrors shining so brightly at each other, mirroring each other's insecurities, each other's wounding, um, bits that still need to be looked at. But this, this is, this is, you wouldn't be able to do this work if you were on each other's doorstep. It's as simple as that, you just wouldn't. Uh, not in the earlier stages, in the latter stages, um, yes, you can. And the interesting thing is that for people that have had a twin, Baal, and a and spirit has looked around and seen another divine counterpart that you would resonate with beautifully, your tones are just perfect. Musical notes, remember. Um, the, the new twin, let's put it that way, the new twin, if there's distance... This whole process of the ball, the alchemy, the magic, the healing, it happens much quicker. It's like we're not talking decades apart. In fact, the most interesting observation of what I'm hearing is that in that scenario, this whole thing speeds up really quickly um, because you've done a lot of the other work with the previous twin. Because, yes, you can have more than one twin. And again, uh Certainly a year ago, maybe even six months ago, if I somebody had said that to me, I would have totally poo-pooed it. And I would have I would have been triggered by that. It's like and I know people did say it. Some of you did say it to me in your comments. But again, remember, this is a path. This is a journey. And just because, for example, I didn't understand that bit of it then I do now. Um, I will have understood another bit of it that maybe you didn't. It's, ne it's never about, it's never about who's, uh, who. the thing with the twin flame journey is all of us have to get to a place whereby we actually are humble enough to realise what we don't know. And we, we, we know bits of the jigsaw, but we don't know the whole jigsaw. And even when you've come together with your twin, okay, whichever version that is, whichever note you know, you finally succeeded with and literally reached that high and come into union with, um, there will still be more learning. Of course there will, because that's the whole point of it. It's a vehicle through which you learn, through which you refine your, uh, your essence. Um, the healing that would happen in a, a couple that actually are together and have done a lot of inner work would be, um, well, let me just see if I can tune into it. my god um i don't know I'm, I'm a bit speechless actually i i don't i just don't know what to say um because that what i what i'm shown in terms of what the two are capable of together is so deep it is so deep it is so special It's just so special. It's so deep. It's so... I don't have words for it. I don't actually have words for it. And I can see how the baton sometimes gets passed. Because what this is that you eventually do together is beyond anything you've done before. One and one make three. You've never had that before. You've maybe had relationships where one and one make two. And you might be jogging on fine. To have one and one make three is next level stuff. 
Um, the fact that I can feel it though is encouraging because it shows it's near, it's close for many people watching this. Um, right. Going back to the one that maybe leaves or passes the baton. Um, before that happens, it's probably your worst fear in the world that, you know, union never ha is never going to happen, that they're never going to come good, that you've wasted a lot of time. This might be an ego talk. I've wasted a lot of time waiting, doing the work. I've got nothing to show for it. You know, what the hell is that all about? A lot of anger can come up. A lot of frustration can come up. A lot of disappointment can come up. Um, a lot of doubt can come up in terms of um, your spiritual path. You know, if I was wrong on that, what else am I wrong on? You know, these are things that you will be working through. But the weird thing is that when it actually happens, spirit seems to come in and sail you through it. So you still have to feel the feelings. But the only way to describe it is when you then next see, for example, the photograph of that person or see their name or meet them in the street or whatever it is. Whereas before you might have been a bit like a blubbering jelly. <laughs> you feel nothing. You feel nothing. It's like spirit comes in with anaesthetic and numbs it. But, but not numbs it in a way which is like, I'm just numbing it because it's too painful and you, you know, you're not grown up enough to be able to feel this. It's, it's a, it's so, it's such a weird one. It's just like, okay, what Metatron's showing me is it's like spirit turns the page for you. And so when spirit turns the page for you, even though you've been fixated on that page and it's like you've been reading it to death, you know, I can see the page, it's all got like watermarks on it in terms of, oh, they haven't done this, they haven't done, you know, all of that, okay, been fixated on that page, spirit just comes in and turns the page. And what's really interesting is there's no interest to then go back and look at that old page. So, like, what? well, okay, well, I can if I want to, but it doesn't really resonate anymore, I don't really... That is a legitimate experience that many people are having. Um, and again, that's gonna trigger some people because it's like, no, I would never not feel anything for my twin. Well, if you're on the path of what I'm describing here, you might wanna come back to this video in a year's time, six months time, and you might revisit it and say, actually, that did happen. And that's really weird that I, the feelings have just Not completely gone, but it's like it's like the baton gets passed because it's not about the person. It's about the energy. When the energy moves from the person that you were focused on in terms of twin flame, when the energy moves, you follow the energy. Now, that energy might go to another person, but it's not going to go to another person in terms of like I've desperation in terms of think of it as energy it's not desperate to find the next host for you no in fact sometimes the energy won't go to anybody else it'll just hover it'll just be it's just there it doesn't have to be about anybody else but it can go to somebody else but remember they're one of the divine sparks that were created at the same time as you they have the same note that you hold the same scent that you hold, you know, the same vibration that you hold. It's not just going out to the high street and it's like, yeah, okay, give it to them. <laughs> They're good looking, give it to them. No, it's not about that at all. I hope this is making sense. I think it is making sense. Metatron says it's making sense to some. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say? Yeah, the other thing about this turning the page on the twin that you thought was a twin, we're not going to call them a false twin. They're not a false twin. They're part of the whole experience. It's a it's a race. It's the baton race, okay? Every single person is valid in that baton race. You might just have two players on the whole race, you and that person. You might never need to exchange the baton, but some people do. And as I say, death can also be part of this as well. Um, what I've written down here is that when they go, the first twin, it, it feels as natural as shedding a skin 
I'm being shown like a, a snake that sheds its skin. And the, 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 the skin only sheds because you have done the inner work. It doesn't shed if you haven't. So rather than thinking, oh my God, what, you know, that was a, that was a big fail. What a waste of time that was. Why have I been, you know, wanting that for so long? You know, all that work to get to a place where I'm just, be, I'm just being given an empty dish. No, no, because you don't see the extraordinary bounty and abundance and learning and gifts that that person gave you. They got you to this point. They got you to that octave. They, they got you much higher than you ever would have been. Okay. Um, so if they, for whatever reason, you know, disappear, um, it's to do with you're ready for the next level, which they're not able to provide. Um, what you need to be doing is thanking them. And I realise some people find that hard to do because it's like, well, why would I want to thank them? It's like, thanks for nothing, mate. But no, you need to thank them. They've got you to this level. Um, I wrote some words down, which I think would be a nice thing to do, a little ritual to do, maybe. If you've got somebody in your life, as I say, that you didn't make it past to the final hurdle with. Um, and it might be nice to do something like this. Maybe get a photograph of them or it doesn't have to be a photograph. It could just be good. Write their name on a piece of paper or something that is symbolic of them. And you say something along these lines. Thank you. I'm letting you go with love. I'm wishing you happiness. I'm being at peace with who we were and who we are now. Travel on, my friend, or travel on, my love, if you want to call them that. So thank you. I'm letting you go with love. I'm wishing you happiness. Being at peace with who we were and who we are now. Travel on, my love. And yes, there may be a little bit of emotion that comes up with that. You know, you are a human being, you're not a robot. So when I'm talking about the page being turned and like the feelings aren't there, of course, I mean, I'm a Cancerian. There's always going to be some feelings on, you know, anything that I'm talking about. But you'll you'll be surprised at the absence of what used to be. Because you were focused on that one page, page has turned. So it's really important that you, if you can, you thank that person. Um, a big part also of spirit having intervened and let go of somebody that wasn't able to, you know, get to the final hurdle with you is it's an ego death. It's an ego death. Um, you will have hurt pride. Your ego will be hurt and dented. Um, but ego death is an extraordinary thing which frees you up to other unlimited possibilities. Um, one of you said, and I understand this, it's also to do with letting go of the fairy tale, letting go of the fantasy. Um, Sometimes we can get tied into that for all sorts of reasons. There's nothing wrong with, you know, fantasies and fairy tales, I don't believe. And indeed, sometimes a lot of the twin flame teaching has often focused on people who are trapped in very karmic uh, situations, karmic relationships, not being able to free themselves to get to their twin or their twin being in a karmic relation, not being able to free themselves to get to you. Um, so this whole thing of, uh, you know, the fairy tale, the happy ever after, sometimes that's what keeps people going, you know, if they're in a very unhappy situation. So that shouldn't be mocked. No part of the journey, no stage of it should ever be mocked, um, or derided as silly. None of it is silly. 
all of it is actually an extraordinary vehicle through which you learn your own worth. Um, you truly learn your own worth. And if the page has turned for you and your divine counterpart did not come forward, you will be surprised at how easily you're able to step into your self-worth. It frees you up to discover who you really are. Um, another thing that seems to be happening is that I'm being shown the example of nature. Metatron's given me the example of nature and animals. I mean, we are an animal. We, we don't often like to think that we're an animal, but we are, we're animals. Okay, we're spiritual beings, but you know, physicality, we're, we're an animal. Um, he, he, I've written two things down here. The queen bee, okay, the divine feminine, is wanted by not just one. And again, I'm not really up on animal psychology, but I'm just being shown animals and they feel like they're, uh, I don't know whether they are wildebeests, I'm not very good with identifying animals, but it feels like some sort of land animal. Anyway, I'm talking about animals who fight over the female, okay? There is a thing within, it's a natural part, it's an organic natural part of nature, and we are part of nature, which is the male will often have to show his dominance to claim his female. And the female is the one who, you know, sort of sits pretty and, you know, when I say waits to be claimed, that's assuming you've done the work, guys, because no one's going to claim you if you haven't done the work. But you've done the work. That's why you're Queen Bee. OK, it's like the divine. It's the Empress energy. OK, it's the Empress. It's the goddess energy. You're shining that. You're radiating that. Others will see that and it's going to be more than one. So the, the, the next stage feels as though it gets to this place whereby the divine masculine it's like a big shape. There's like it's like the it's like the jungle energy. It's it is its dominance. It's um, not in an unpleasant way, not in a way that I'm going to fight you for her, but just in a energetic way. Energetically, there's more than one masculine energy hovering around the queen bee's nest. Let's put it that way. OK, now this is not an excuse to play around. This is not an excuse to play the field. The twin flame energy is nothing, it's not interested in any of that, okay? It's interested in pure, honest, divine connection with a counterpart that is willing to do the work themselves, do the work with me, and create something extraordinary to the third level, which has not been done before um, and cannot be really done in isolation, because it is one and one make three, okay? You can still make amazing things in, on your own. And I'm not saying that you need somebody to complete you. It's not that. This is just a path, which if it's resonating what I'm saying, it's to do with the fact that you get to a level whereby you are empress, you are emperor. Together, you put them together. It's power couple stuff. OK, but it feels as though just before that happens, there is this energetic. I'm just I'm hearing buzzing. It's like a buzzing. It's like it's like grapevine stuff. Interesting. I was given the analogy of notes, spirit linking up notes. You go with that person. You've, you've got the same note. It's almost as like there's this buzzing on the wire. It's almost like, hold on a minute. There's that there's this person here who's ready this one, again, it's the analogy of the sperm and the egg. It's like, which one's going to get there first? Um, and it's designed that way, I'm hearing. It's beautiful. It's designed that way for a reason, which is, I mean, putting it bluntly, it's a bit of a kick up the backside. <laughs> it's a kick up the backside energy, okay? And it does feel it's more for the divine masculines. It's like, well, if you want it, you're going to have to raise your game. You're going to have to raise your game because there's actually, there's this other energy there's on the wire. Other people are starting to notice this one here, okay? It's going to be interesting, okay, if, um, for whatever happens. I, I, I can assure you it's not going to be boring. 
So yeah, that's what I've got written down here. Um, anything else to say? I want to pull some cards. Oh, I want to say this as well, that if you get a new twin flame coming in, you will go through the whole process damn sight faster than the first time, okay? A damn sight faster, because remember, you've already done most of the work, okay, with your previous twin flame. You've already done most of your work. You're not starting from scratch. You're not going back to kindergarten books, okay? You're reading advanced level here. So the whole process happens much quicker. The other thing that's really important to note is that if you have a new twin flame, for want of a better word, coming forward, divine counterpart, whatever you want to call it, um, there's no mucking about, okay? There's no mucking about. So any mucking about um, gets seen for what it is very quickly. And whereas maybe in the past, one or both of you might have put up with it, <laughs> uh, no, it, it doesn't get put up. It doesn't, it, 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 it will be, you're not allowed to repeat the mistakes of the past. That's what I'm trying to say. So if one of your um, issues had been, um, you know, maybe waiting, you know, it's like, well, I'll wait, I'll give them a bit more time or I'll always be the one to contact, you know, because, you know, they can't do it, bless them. No. Uh, and then you get that repeated coming in with a new potential mate, Okay, you just see the same story playing out. It'll just be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not having that. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not playing that game. I played that game last time, you know. Uh, you might be the same note, but actually there's all these other notes as well. Remember the, the telegram, I'm just seeing the telegram wire with all these little birds on it. And it's like, which bird is hopping? There's one bird here, which is you, okay. And these other birds like are hopping closer towards the honey pot here. Um, so no games, no games. So things like ghosting or ghosting's a big one in Twin Flame, you know, just that's that's not that's not something that you don't go through the same hoops, that's what I'm trying to say. You see it for what it is very clearly. It might happen, um, and it's not it's you're able to get past it if you're able to break down whatever the resistance is. Um that, that in, in terms of how that person's behaving. Sorry, I didn't express that very clearly. What I'm trying to say is that you don't actually have to do anything. If you're being ghosted, okay, if you're the one being ghosted, you don't do anything because you've already learned in the previous cycle that how rubbishy that felt, okay? And you realized what that was about, which was why would I, if I've got high self-worth, why am I waiting on somebody? Why am I waiting, okay? So it's for them to do the work. And again, it's like, I'm hearing like, so funny, I'm hearing like the beat of the jungle. It's like, come on, you, you've got some time, mate. You've got a little bit of time, but you haven't got forever because there are these other ones following on. It's going to get very, very interesting. And um, yeah, let's pull some cards at this point. I did pull some last night, has to, has to be said. Um, I'll show you what they are, but I also want to pull some fresh ones today. Um, let's just use a spray. Um, do you like my roses, by the way? Aren't they gorgeous? You see, this is this is this is classic a twin flame sort of thing. I I've said this so many times on my videos. I'm making a Christ consciousness deck. The painting or the card that's going to express love. Uh, I haven't got it to hand to show you, but I've shown it to you loads of times. It's basically a heart. I think it's got gushing water coming through the heart. There's a little hummingbird hovering on the card. Okay, it's the card of love, divine love. So yesterday, one of you sends me a postcard. It's the hummingbird, okay? It's quite lovely, thank you, by the way. You sent this to me from Jamaica. Okay, it's from Jamaica, it's got the hummingbird. It says that the hummingbird is the national bird of Jamaica. I never knew that. Um, known to locals as the doctor bird, but equally, it's got Bob Marley on it. Bob Marley uh, is, is on the stamp and I've channeled Bob Marley. And again, Three Little Birds. I keep talking about birds. Yeah, he, he did the song Three Little Birds, didn't he? Every little thing is going to be all right. That's the vibe. It's like we've all got to be a bit Bob. You know, it's like in this new energy that I'm channeling here, this new twin, twin flame energy that's arriving is nothing linked into the path, past in terms of who is the runner and who is the chaser, 
I'm sorry, but that's just a load of BS. I'd, no time for any of that nonsense anymore. You know, the closer we get to um, a, a, a greater ascension within ourself, runner and chaser goes out the window. That's just games. It's, it's, it's got nothing to do with this. This energy coming forward is... When I say let's have some fun, I'm talking about playful. It's almost like taking us back to um, Eden. It's the energy of Eden. It's very innocent. It's very inquisitive. It's exploratory. It's about adventure. It's about trust. It's like, why would I not trust you? Why would I not trust you? Why would I not have faith in you? You know, why would I be sitting, you know, you know at home, you know, gnawing my fingernails in terms of why have they not run? Uh, no, sorry, no. That's not this path. That's not this path. Okay. This is the path of where we're at now. If you're still listening to me, where we are now, these are two um, emotionally mature individuals that are flawed. 100% they'll be flawed. 100% they'll still have work to do on themselves. They'll still have fear. They'll still have insecurity. Okay. Because you're a human being. But equally, there is just this, again, what is Twin Flame all about? It's about the belief in love. They believe in love. It's that share song again. And Bob Marley, every little thing's going to be all right. What is that song by Cher? Believe in love. I'm not being rude about Cher. This is probably going to be the wrong thing to say and probably totally in politically incorrect. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not saying it in a horrible way. I'm saying it in a... Maybe I won't even say it. Believe. <laughs> right, I'm going to read the lyrics. What I was just about to say about Cher is that it's the whole thing about the masculine and the feminine energy within ourselves. Because Cher is a beautiful woman. She's sexy. She's gorgeous. She's exotic. She looks great. I love Cher. But equally, her voice is quite masculine. It's quite a masculine voice, isn't it? It's very deep. It's like this. Uh, anyway, the point is, so there's something about Cher as an energy, which I think is quite good for Twin Flame, because um, Twin Flame is about the, the union of the masculine and the feminine within you, that you can be feminine and floaty and beautiful and sexy, but equally you can have a deep, gravelly voice that demands respect. The words to this is perfect. Um, this is to do with the ones that have bailed. Um, no matter how hard I try, you keep pushing me aside and I can't break through, through. There's no talking to you. So sad that you're leaving. It takes time to believe it. But after all is said and done, you're going to be the lonely one. Do you believe in life after love? I can feel something inside me say, I really don't think you're strong enough now. Do you believe in life after love? I need time to move on. I need love to feel strong because I've had time to think it through and maybe I'm too good for you. Yeah, it, it's just this lev level of understanding and realisation. And it's a bit like a lightning bolt that comes in, which is like, oh my God, you're never actually going to do it, are you? you you're never actually going to be able to make it past this block. Uh, and it's it, there's no, there shouldn't be any vindictiveness in it. There shouldn't be any judgment in it. It's just like this dawning re realisation. And sometimes it's after years, decades or months which is like, you're just not going to be able to do it. Because there comes a point where, you know, we're only here for a certain number of years on this earth. And if you're here to bring in that third energy, then the baton will get passed to somebody else. It's a good song now. Anyway, let's put Bob back and the bird back. And I'm going to tell you about the cards. Let's just bring in the energy of Sanat Kumara. So Sanat Kumara um, is very much linked into the energy of Twin Flame. And he's showing me the and he's showing me the energy of fire here. I mean, we've got two flames there, but it's as though what you the, the two flames that you, the height that the two flames were able to have been reached in the previous expression of it are nothing compared to the potential height of the flames of the one that the baton has been passed to or could potentially be passed to. As I say, it's not about if there has to be somebody. Um, but for those where it looks like somebody else has appeared or is appearing, or you can just feel that they are hovering, because that's a big one as well. They might not actually be in your life, but you know that you know they're there. They're like they're just hovering. 
um, the, the, the fire, the light that you're going to be able to create with this, uh, let's just say, new twin flame is going to be bigger than it would have been with the previous. A ladder of light is what he's saying. Okay, what cards did I get last night? Um, interestingly, I pulled these two cards from the a deck by a lady uh, called Mermaid Chalice. She's on Instagram. They're called Light Language Lightbury Oracle Deck. She created them herself. They're, they're very nice. I, I think they're a lovely little deck. Um, and I pulled one card for Lemuria and one card for Sirius. Now, of course, these are galactic energies. It feels as though the feminine energy is more Lemurian and it feels like the masculine energy is more Syrian. Um, but remember that you are male and female because to be perfectly honest, talking about myself here, my feminine energy definitely resonates with the Lemurian lifetime that I've had. My masculine energy resonates very strongly with the Syrian energy. So I don't know... It may just be there's different connotations of galactic star systems at play within you. It might just be helpful for you to think about your galactic heritage in terms of your masculine and feminine, but equally your divine counterpart as well. It feels as though when spirit looked around for different notes that are the same as you, for the baton to be passed to, they didn't just listen to the sound and the note, they also looked at the galactic heritage. Um, and so they've really mixed it up a bit. They, they're, they're actually creating a, an extraordinary recipe is what Metatron is saying. So you and this new person, whoever that is, whether you know them yet or you don't know them that yet, um, the galactic mix is extraordinary because again, we're taking it up to the third level. We're taking it up to the third level. Um, Okay, Metatron's giving me the analogy of, uh, let's take it down to earth for a moment. If you obviously procreate with your family, you are going to dilute the, um, uh, the gene pool, aren't you? Okay, that's why you don't have, you're not allowed to have, you know, relations with your brother or your sister, that type of thing. We all know that. Um, so this is to do with, galactic energies that you hold and your divine counterpart holds that are a really interesting mix. I have a feeling it could e it also be to do with blood. And by blood, I'm talking about rhesus negative blood. I really want to do a video on rhesus negative blood. I'm actually rhesus negative, a rhesus negative. And the thing about rhesus negative blood is it's supposed to be alien in nature. Um, nobody quite knows how it arrived on this planet. There are various theories as to how it appeared. But uh, I think it's 15% of the world's population have rhesus negative blood, maybe 10%, I'm not sure. But it, it, it's very new as well. It only arrived on this planet relatively recently. So again, mixing a rhesus negative blood with different blood groups produces something different as well. Mixing galactic energies um, creates different things as well. Um, there's a great big, <laughs> Metatron's saying there's a great big holy soup being created. <laughs> He's showing me bits of minestrone, you know, in a soup with minestrone and you've got like a little bit of carrot here, a bit of pasta here, a bit of broccoli floating over there. It's like, that's what spirit are doing. <laughs> They're creating this soup. We are the ingredients, my friends, okay? You are the ingredient to somebody else and together you make a holy soup. And it seems to be linked into your blood. It seems to be linked into your galactic heritage. It's linked into what you know, what you've already learnt on the twin flame path, what they've already learnt on the twin flame path. They don't even have to resonate with the name twin flame. I'm just using this because what else do I call this video? You know, it's just a, it's a, it's a label. I don't like labels. Call it divine counterpart if you want, but you know, um, yeah, I like that. Holy soup. Okay. And equally, it doesn't mean that you've got to have children with these people. Okay. Um, it, it, it doesn't mean that you've got to procreate. Some of you will. It's to do with what you what you birth, okay? What you birth together. It may be a physical child, 
but for many people, particularly older people, it's not going to be a child. It's going to be something else. It could be a business adventure. It could be a creative project. It could be, I don't know what it is, but it's going to be, you'll know, you'll know when you get it together with this other one who's sort of floating here, or maybe they're already around you, or maybe they're actually with you, you're going to know. It's going to be just like this, these magnets that want to come together. Anyway, we'll park the blood thing for another time. I'll look at rhesus negative blood. We'll bring that into a different video. Um, right, what other cards did I get? Um, Heaven on Earth. This, this deck is from um, the Lemurian Star Child Oracle. I will put the link below on this one because I do actually have an affiliate link to this. So if you buy this deck... Uh, I get some money for a cup of coffee. I think I've said that to you before, but um, it's a very nice way to do business, actually, because I, hopefully I promote them a bit and then they help me out as well. So uh, it's very 5D, that, you know. So uh, Lemurian Star Child Oracle. It's a beautiful deck. The cards I pulled last night from it are Heaven on Earth. Okay, we're trying to create Heaven on Earth here with Twin Flame. Um, it says all are invited, all are invited. Fifth dimension, new earth, spirit in matter. We've also got the card of purity. You are pure, open, spiritual eyes. The unicorn energy, purity. Because th this whole, you know, moving around of uh, energies, which has been happening with regard to the whole twin flame, I wanted to say experiment, but anyway... Um, what you have to understand is that there's a, there's a real pure intention in terms of what spirit have done, which is that if somebody wasn't able to do all the work, it's kinder for them to be let go, actually. It's kinder for them because then they don't have the pressure of like, because they, they would have known that you were waiting at some level of being, even if you'd not spoken to them for years, they'd have known there was a pressure on them to be able to cut the mustard. OK, to be able to reach what, you know, they knew they could reach, but they just couldn't for whatever reason. Um, so, you know, what has been done has been done for the right reasons. Um, the horn here of the unicorn, the, the guiding white light of the unicorn's horn. Um, It's like a blinking laser, isn't it? It's going out of the unicorn. It's like, I, I again, it's like a, it's like a heat-seeking missile. Um, body temperature is another thing. Okay, it's interesting. So we've got who you're lined up with is not just galactic heritage. It's not just blood. It's, it doesn't mean you've got to be the same blood group, by the way. I mean, I don't even understand what Metatron's saying here. It's got something to do with DNA mixes or something. I don't know. Um, it's not just to do with musical note and the tone and the frequency. It's to do with the light, obviously, that you carry. But it's equally to do with your heat. It's to do with it's to do something to do with the body temperature, fire and water. I don't know, guys. Okay. We also have got creation, which says unique expression, flow of creation and joyfulness. That's what you create together. That is the third energy. That is the third energy. It's alchemy. What are you going to create from a pure heart with your twin flame? I love this card, card number 11. It says nurture, self-healing, the ruby ray and birthing the new earth. We've got two cards here all to do with birthing the new earth. So again, you're being teamed up with somebody in spirit or an energy in spirit, a connection here on the 3D earth, which is helping birth the new earth. Yeah. Cosmic circles, which is to do with possibilities and opportunities that are opening up. Create sacred space. Embrace unlimited possibilities. You see, that to spirit, that's what it looks like. 
this is what it, that's what, say that's, can you see here, there's like two little floaty orbs. That's what they see. When they look down and they see um, Thomas or Jane or Amanda or whoever it is, they, they just, they see the light. They see the codes that are within you. They see the temperature that is within you. They see the purity that is within you. They see the work that you've done and they match it to some up body else who's vibrating at the same level. The other one that hasn't been able to step up and do it or meet you or isn't destined to be, you know, with you on this next path of your twin flame journey, they've sort of been shot out into space with love, but they have. They're now in a different space. They're literally in a different space. And you now have the opportunity to create something magical with this new person. This is lovely, this card. It says ether and, I'll show you in a minute. It says ether and matter, uh, new life, sparkles and bedding the light. Look at that. Can you see the card okay? Masculine and feminine coming together. It's just beautiful. Two infinity signs. I like the fact that there's two infinity signs. You see, the infinity sign is a symbol for twin flame. Lots of people, when they see the infinity sign, they say, oh, twin flame. You got a double one there. You, you got more than one twin. There's more than one of everything, Metatron's saying. And then we've got this card, which is beautiful again. It says, the last cloak, release old identities, your magnificence is revealed. I think this is where a lot of us are. We are releasing the last cloak. Uh, the, the last part of our journey. I mean, it's obviously going to carry on, but in, in terms of union, I'm, I mean, okay, the last cloak before union with another to be released is this one, which is old identities. What is that old identity? That you were the twin flame. It had to be you. It's only you. I've waited 20 years. Damn it, you are it. <laughs> it is. Come on, we've got to laugh about it sometimes. We have to laugh about it. We've got to release that identity to the fact it has to be the way that we've thought it is. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Is that Stonehenge at the top of this lady? I think it is. Right, let's pull a few other cards for today. That was last night's set. Um, I don't really want to do the traditional how's the divine masculine feeling because I feel like we've sort of gone beyond that. Um, because at this level, this is like masterclass level, you know how they're feeling. You don't need me to pull a card for you to tell you how your divine counterpart is feeling. You know it. At this level, you know it. You might not want to confront it or face it, but you know it. Stakes feel very high. Right, let's just see. What other message wants to come through today, please, on this video? One hour and 14 minutes I've been talking, so I mustn't talk for too much longer. Some final messages, please, then, to wrap this up. Anything else that needs to be said in this video? Let me just bring in Mary Magdalene as well. Her energy. I want to bring her energy in. Mary Magdalene. For Divine Feminines, I feel the Mary Magdalene energy is extraordinarily powerful and potent. She brings us into our power. She reminds us of who we are. She reminds us of what we're worth. She gets us ready to receive. She's saying, I'm getting you ready to receive. I'm getting you ready to, I'm getting you ready to receive. She's repeating, I'm getting, I'm getting you ready to receive. So um, she's saying that the divine feminine in particular for so long has been uh, in a, either a holding pattern or a waiting pattern. Um, this is now about getting ready to actually receive something that is real and coming and concrete.
whether that is a person or whether that's a new piece of knowledge, a realisation, um, a gift from the universe. <laughs> Look what's come back up again. Shuffled it. Look, it's come back up. The final cloak. The last cloak. Right, let me just see. Let's bring in Mary for this. What the hell is this last cloak? Release old identities, yes. Release all expectations, yes. Okay, I understand. Yeah, release all expectations. Surrender to all eventualities, all possibilities. In in it's what I said at the beginning, including anything happening. Despite everything that I've said here, all of which is true, it could even be that the initial one at the not the 11th hour, it'd be the 11th hour and 58 minutes or whatever, you know, comes in and actually claims the prize. Th this is, I'm just seeing like this, it's like a jungle. It's like the drums of the jungle. It's like unions are, it's like they're so close for so many people. But I never thought I would say this, but I am going to say it. It's like, and it does feel it's more the divine feminine who's the one in the stronger position. It's as though there are these other masculine energies. Which one is going to pip to the post? Which one pips the other person to the post? I'm, f I'm feeling it's like that. It could be, it could be, I can say it could be anybody. Of course, it's not anybody, but it just, God, this is, I hope, I hope this video has made sense to some people because it's bloody hard to try and explain this stuff. Um... Somebody pips somebody else to the post is what I'm hearing. And then I'm seeing whoever pips the other person to the post, the, the one who wins, okay, I'm seeing they, they, they look behind and it's like it's a, oh, it's a photo finish, I'm hearing, it's a photo finish. There's a bit of competition at the end, there is. But again, you know, don't get into any of the drama of that. It's it. This is all underneath the surface. You you may you may not see any of this play out. What Metatron is showing me is okay. I'm being shown the example of the first twin. Okay, who bailed. You don't know how close they've come to picking up the phone and or writing or reaching out. You don't know how close they've come. That doesn't mean that they ever actually going to do it and make the call. OK, if my phone goes off now, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> you don't, I'm being serious. You don't know how close they've got. How many times we all, we've often all done this. Have you maybe written a text? You've written a message. You've picked up the phone, you know, a bit of Dutch courage. And then nah, I can't do it. You just don't know. But the thing is, spirit does, because spirit sort of knows the way this is going to play out. Um, I think there's meant to be a bit of mystery around all of this. And this last cloak is to do, oh, it's to do with releasing control. Of course it is. Of course it is. You've got to, re you've got to release control. You have to release control. Um, anything is up for grabs. What goes with this card? And the ultimate prize is the, um, is the third level ultimate expression of love. I will just ask what the Divine Feminine is meant to be doing in all of this, but hold on a minute. Let's just see what goes with the last cloak. You see, even the last cloak is card number eight. We're back to the infinity sign again. What goes with the last cloak, please, Mary? And that's still on the bottom of the deck. We're back. We've got this one back. New life, sparkles, bedding the light, ether and matter. There's two twin flames here. There's two infinity signs. There's a dolphin, joyful, happiness, light vibration. None of this should be provoking worry or stress or like, oh, none of that, none of that. No drama, no playing around, none of that. That's all, that's all 3D. That's all, no, none of, no, letting go of all of that. I can't express enough. This is, <sighs> spirit are happy. Um, you should be happy. You should be feeling free. 
it's like totally opening up to yourself, who you are, who another person might be. There's just this beautiful sense of expectation. It's like pregnancy. You know, I say that, look what's on the bottom of the deck. Divine Cosmic Mother, womb. <laughs> And it says, you are loved, you are safe, rest now, sleep well. Spirit's got this. Spirit's got this. Whatever is about to occur has been incubating for quite some time. Quite some time. It literally is. It's like the analogy of birth and you've given birth and it's like, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. <laughs> Is it a girl? Is it a boy? It literally is like that. It's like, you, you don't know. There's some magic afoot, my friends. There's some magic afoot. Got the new man has come through as well. The enlightened masculine. Just in the nick of time. The enlightened masculine appears and he claims the prize. Oh, what a beautiful card that is. It says enlightened masculine, potential, new earth. I'm going to take that as the, you see, that's very Christ-like as well, isn't it? And I realise I've sprayed the Mary Magdalene energy and I didn't acknowledge Christ. And of course, Mary Magdalene and Christ together, I believe, is a twin flame energy as well. Sacred divine counterparts. They will help birth this. Uh, it feels like Christ and the Jesus energy is helping the divine masculine. Not exclusively, of course, he'll help women as well. But remember, your divine masculine within you, Christ is helping. And it feels as though Mary Magdalene is helping um, your, the divine feminine within yourself. And maybe the external expression of that in terms of another person. Um, oh, God, look. You see, look what's on the bottom of the butt. Look what, look, I mean, look, I, I'm speechless. I am speechless. Look what's on the bottom. We've got the new man and we've got divine feminine. And then do you know what the next card is? Oh my God, arise, arise. Know and flow as the love you are bliss. The dolphins are leaping. The dolphins are gonna be celebrating these unions that are coming in. Should we check back in a few months? Let's do that. Anyway, I look forward to reading your um, comments below. There is a portals card here, which has just caught my eye. Portals, doorways into now, letting go of the warrior. Yeah, letting go of fighting. What I'm talking about here, it's, there's no fighting in this. You know, um, it's, it's easy, it flows. And so this last cloak is about let down the resistance. Okay, back to Tower Bridge. Open up the bridge. Let down your resistance. Let down the blocks. You're wounded. We all are wounded. Vulnerability. Rawness. I don't know how this is going to play out, but there's a new man out there and there's a divine feminine and there's going to be a celebration coming in. I hope it applies to you, my friend. Much love. Take care. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know how you found this video below. Bye for now. Bye.